So this will eventually become my uh, double acting water ram pump. Um, all PVC 40 schedule uh, pipe, Home Depot. Um, the, got the theoretical design on uh, YouTube and some PDF files, uh, case studies from like uh, Yale, Cornell, uh, Cal Poly, whatnot. Just different type of test, uh, different fittings, uh, different configurations and whatnot. The, um, there are many different type of uh, water pumps, of course, um, piston style, uh, plunger, bucket style, what you know, whatever. Um, this style, I have um, just a small little uh, plastic bit. It weighs about three grams. It's very, very light, and it has a very thick um, wall, so it will not crack as it plunges back and forth. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, ram water pumps, but there is an oscillating piston system. Mine is located in between these two joints right here. It'll oscillate between here and then here and then here. It just goes back and forth. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, our uh, stand pipes where we create a um, gas lock, air lock, up into this chamber and in this chamber. And the reason I have these slightly at different um, fixture elevations is that um, th these things are known to get stuck. Uh, they will, the bullet will, or the piston rather, will get stuck in the mid here and just kind of be in limbo. Uh, I've designed mine where it cannot be, uh, it cannot flutter in between here. It will either be plugging one end or the other, therefore pressure will always be on one end or the other. And to um, assist this, I have this pipe here. I will have another air chamber lock here. I've created this uh, after reading a lot of the different designs. Um, this basically creates a buffer. Uh, you know, uh, hydro lock, water cannot compress, but air can. Air can expand and compress. So in this area, air will expand and compress as it pushes the water up and down, up and down, and that will assist the uh, pumping action that will eventually be the fixture going upwards up towards wherever I need the water to be. <clears throat> uh, there will eventually be um, a valve. There will be like a 5 psi valve here, a 3 psi valve here, and another 3 psi valve here. So as water comes in, as this thing oscillates in that position, that valve will open and back and forth. When that's in that position, the water flow will go that and so oscillate back and forth. And the same, um, <clears throat> the same concept with this figure here, where the gas, the air, gas, whatever you fill it with, as long as you have it locked, it has nowhere to escape. The water flow will constantly compress that air back and forth. Same with the other side, compressing the air back and forth as these valves open and close and the piston acts back and forth, releasing the pressure back and forth. Um, when it releases that pressure, that pressure does get shot up into here and then it fluctuates and shoots back as the piston goes back the other way and that pressure goes and gets sent up here, making a pulsating upward effect. Uh, as you notice, I have a uh, double the size diameter for my drive pipe as I do for my delivery pipe. This is a half inch pipe. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly how far up I want to pump it um, or how far my drive pipe will be coming from. Um, but the uh, standard rule of thumb is drive pipes are always have always are um, at least twice the diameter of your delivery pipe. <clears throat> um, I'm going to uh, open this thing up a little bit. Just, just kind of show you um, the bullet action or the piston action, I call it a bullet because I have one end hollowed out. So it actually creates a inward expanding motion. <clears throat> and I will now just turn it slightly and you'll start hearing a uh, clicking. And of course you'll have pressure going 
in that left and right there as I'm turning at 45 degree angles and that piston you hear, a bullet, it'll be going back and forth blocking off each angle. It'll be blocking off from here as such and then once I turn it back the other way it'll block off this expansion pipe, stand pipe. And each time it does that, it sends that pulsating shock up through this this fixture, which I've created, I, I, I hope this uh, new design, I don't know if it's new, but I added it on there. It'll send that pulsating effect up this standpipe, which will compress and shoot it back up the delivery pipe as that bullet is in action back and forth. And that will also assist to um, keep it from going into limbo as well because it's that added that added pressure effect. And um, another important aspect that I forgot to mention as well is that um, there should be there should be also a gas chamber in the delivery pipe. Um, you see I have the delivery pipe starting off as a um, whole inch diameter and then it, expand, it uh, compresses into a one inch uh, lateral it's easier to move water sideways than it is upward, so I have the uh, I have the uh, down size going lateral. <clears throat> but um, there is a small pipe. There's the uh, half inch pipe going down through this tube inside this one inch diameter, and what that creates is a uh, uh, airlock here. There's there's air here, and it comes down, and hopefully. I uh, will get that same kind of fluctuating effect between the uh, atmospheric gas and the water and it'll just hydro lock back and forth so that little pipe down there will constantly be pushed, being pushed air up or uh, water up excuse me water will be pushed up here and right here is kind of the cutoff where the air cannot escape only um, water can then proceed through that one inch fixture um, it's actually just a small um, T, uh, half inch T or half inch uh, elbow bending inside a uh, one inch elbow bending in here. So that's what that that's what that is, and that's where the air cuts off. So this is the gas chamber, and um, that will fluctuate up and down, also pushing the air, water, excuse me, um, up through this half inch, and eventually my standpipe. <clears throat> Um, the reason, I don't know, um, these, these, these valves, these, uh, one inch valves, they lock up the air pretty damn well, especially when you get water in there, the water wicks in there and actually creates a hydro seal. Um, I, instead of capping them, I decided to do it this way. Uh, because maybe eventually I want to put another standpipe up here because, you know, these things operate much better when they are a bit subterraneous. So the further down you can get the uh, drive pipe from your water source, the much better these things work. So that's why I have so many upward uh, um, end terminals for these pipes is that I want to create more chamber up here. That way, eventually, you know, if I want to put this thing farther up, I will create more of a um, buffering effect with that gas chamber, as well as the benefit of, you know, I can adjust these as well. So maybe I want to create more of a, a fast, fast action motion with that piston, you know. Um, that all also depends on what kind of spring. Uh, one way spring valve I'm going to get or maybe a swing valve there are many different type of valves there's also the ball valves um, but they they usually have a pretension on them so they are rated at a certain PSI and you'll always want to have your drive pipe uh, slightly more PSI than these because you want that cap you want that shock pulsating effect to hydro lock between these two pipes constantly and the um, the over the shock wave that creates the PSI that opens that wastegate valve will go you know it, it'll constantly be pushing that that water up this way and so um, these designs um, by concept they should be more than 90 percent efficient uh, given that you have all your seals and pipe fittings right and that you're getting the most volumetric efficiency out of your um, entire system. Uh, that is to say, uh, like your drive pipe uh, has, has to always be 
twice as big as your um, delivery pipe, and that's that's a must. That's always known. So that's that's kind of like a volumetric efficiency uh, rule of thumb. Um, so yeah, um, <clears throat> on this drive pipe, I might actually eventually put you know a huge uh, uh, a column fixture because um, you know of course the deeper you go in water, the uh, more atmospheric pressure you um, gain. Uh, I think it's something like uh, point. 7 or 0.07 or something like that per meters to a pre progressive rate. Um, so, you know, I will have maybe at least a foot or two of uh, the one inch drive pipe because that's, um, you want, you still want that bullet rifling effect, you know, like a, a um, the, a, a cannon versus, you know, a sniper rifle, for example. Um, you have a lot less, um, shaft on the cannon and it's a larger diameter so a lot of expansion is lost immediately once that drive has occurred but in a sniper rifle that drive occurs very long and very um you capture all that expansive pressure so i mean that uh, if i could take that bullet out you would see that that bullet is almost the uh, length and the diameter of like a 50 cal uh full metal jacket you know so <clears throat> uh this drive pipe though i'd want to create that uh maybe a foot or two of one inch um, drive effect and that's why they call it a ram uh, water pump because it rams air in there and it creates that shock effect and that shock effect cre uh, compresses that air and that air with the oscillating valve system pushes that water up very